Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to get Kali Linux set up on a virtual private server. So go on over to the download Kali Linux page and get Kali Linux Lite 64 bit. You can get that via web protocol or torrent. Once you download the ISO file, then you are going to come over to Vulture. And there's a link in the description. And once you're logged in or signed up, logged in, whatever, click on servers, then click deploy new server. From here, we're just going to stick to a Vulture cloud compute instance. And I'm just going to pick a random location, click upload ISO. And here's actually your chance, here's your option to upload the ISO file. I am not going to upload the ISO. I'm just going to simply click on Kali Linux Lite and then... The recommended amount of RAM for Kali Linux is $10 a month. So I can select this. Yeah, I'm sorry. So the recommended amount of RAM is 2 gigabytes of memory, and that is $10 a month through Vulture. I am kind of tired. But anyway, we're going to enable IPv6 in case we want to do some hack the box. And from there, we can pick a random host name like r4p3d.net. And click deploy now. Now, this is going to take a, just a little bit of time, maybe 30 seconds max, but once it's finished, I'll be right back. Okay, so that happened pretty quick. I'm going to click manage from here. The first thing I want to do is click on view console up here, and we are going to see... Actually, we're going to hit the X and then click View Console again. There we go. That's what we want. And we're going to go ahead and use the arrow keys to get down to install. From there, it's going to give us it's going to give us an option here in just a second. It, it takes a, a little bit of time, like initially getting it, it set up. But once you have it set up, you can just snapshot it and restore, which makes this process way faster. So you can blow away your VPS and bring it back at any time. And so that this is how you can basically save money. So instead of just paying a full ten dollars a month, you use your Kali Linux when you need it, and then you blow it away when you do not need it. Coolest part, you never have to actually host to this yourself. So this is totally off of your system. So you're not really putting your your own computer system necessarily at risk. And yeah, you can pick any host name. Pick whatever root password you want. And then from there, it's just going to take a, a little bit of time. And uh, yeah, no, actually, so we're going to use guided, use entire disk. And then we're going to select this. Um, from here, we're going to do all files in one partition. And then say finish partitioning and write changes to disk. So then we're going to do the left arrow key to say yes, we want to write the changes to the disk. And here's actually where we copy all the data over. This is where it takes a little bit of time. So I'll be back when it's done. So we are definitely getting close to the end. Keep in mind, it's probably going to freeze up right here around the eat my data part. 87% does it every time for me. It's going to do it for you. Not a big deal. There's a, a few random freeze spots. It happens. So we're going to say yes to the network mirror. And then we're going to press enter to skip over the proxy. We do not need a proxy. <clears throat> and coming up, we're going to deal with the grub installer. That's the best part of this. Now, there is kind of like a special trick on how we have to boot this. That's going to come a little bit later. We are getting close to being done, so just hang in there with me and just keep following along. So here it's asking, do we want to install the Grub Bootloader? We're going to say yes, and then select the dev, VDA, or whatever. From here... From here, it's going to go ahead and set that all up for us. And it's just a, a matter of time before it gets to 60% where it's going to freeze up because that's uh, the next spot it likes to freeze up. So we're going to do continue. 
boom, it's stuck at 60%. And we've got the remove live packages, which is going to take just a bit. And uh, soon enough, we will ha the system will be rebooted, and then we will take the ISO out. Until then, we're just going to hang tight. From here, we are going to take that ISO out. So to do that, simply go into that server, into the custom ISO, click remove ISO, and OK. This is going to get that ISO out of there, and we should now be able to open the console. And it looks like we did not make it quite fast enough. So we're actually going to close out the console and select server restart and click restart server. Immediately when that happens, we're going to click view console, down arrow, enter, and then down arrow, enter. So we're, we are going into recovery mode. This is important. You follow these instructions. So now we're going to log in using our root password. And the first thing we need to do is mount the, the drive, right? So we're going to do mount um, hyphen O space remount comma RW space slash. And then we need to reconnect because if we do pinggoogle.com right now, it's not going to work. In order to reconnect, we're going to do DH client space F0. For, uh, for Ethernet, I believe, pinggoogle.com. Yep, there we go. So from there, we could do app get update, and then we could do upgrade. I'm not going to do upgrade, so actually what I'm going to do is do nano etc ssh and go into our ssh config. Um, then I'm going to go down qu uh, quite a few lines to the port, and I always like to change this to something like 2261, for example. And then we're going to go even more down to permit root login. And for this, we're actually going to say yes. Yes. And then control O, enter. Control X. And then we should be able to do system, CTL, um, and then enable ssh dot oops dot service and then we're going to say system ctl start ssh dot service from there we can do ip adr and we see this is our server's ip and so we should be able to launch putty put 144.202.55177 and then it was 2261, I believe. We're gonna say yes. Log in with root. Boom. And then from there, we could do our upgrade space hyphen Y. So it gets all of our stuff. Anyway, there you go. You have uh, remote access to SSH Kali Linux. And from there, you could lock down your, your Kali Linux little server here with some firewall rules. Uh, set that stuff all, all up nice and pretty for you and then snapshot it and once you snapshot this server you can go ahead and blow it away and then from from here on out all you got to do is boot it up this way um and and really once you boot it up this way you mount it and you get your service started um you're good to go i mean like you could just do this at any point in time what's really cool about this is this gives you access on the go like if you're on a laptop and you need to just like be running around with a laptop and you need a remote into a cali server uh, you, you can literally just like turn this on and, and, and boot or launch a new virtual private server through vulture using the snapshot here so it literally is awesome. It's pretty amazing if you're not looking to, to virtualize on your own machine. This is perfect in the case where you maybe don't have enough RAM and you don't feel like live booting off your actual main machine. So I, there, I mean, there's that. There's a bunch of different ways you can kind of achieve this type of thing here. But this is just one way that I have found, and I think it's pretty cool. So I wanted to share it with you. Thank you, and have a great day.